Hey everybody, everybody, this is Ryan McClanahan with HistoryThroughCards.com. Hope you're all doing very well today. So recently I found a couple of articles that I really wanted to share with you about a baseball player who turned into an actor. In fact, uh, he was an actor well before he was a baseball player. And uh, that happens to be Johnny Berardino. And uh, this card is actually autographed. It's a 1951 Bowman. And uh, it's actually one of my favorite cards in this set. Uh, the, um, the funny thing is, is that if I grab a, uh, a vintage autograph like this, uh, I have to have another card of that same uh, player unautographed. So this is the unautographed version. And just because I, I really love the artwork in the Bowman sets, uh, baseball and football. And this is actually uh, featured in uh, my intro as well. So um, let's get right into this because I think you guys are going to really enjoy this. This is from the Sacramento Bee, Sacramento, California, January 5th, 1948. Berardino's face is to be insured. Cleveland, January 5th, AP. President Bill Beck disclosed today the Cleveland Baseball Club will ensure the photogenic face of infielder Johnny Berardino for $100,000. The clause written into his contract at the insistence of Polymer Productions, a studio which holds his movie contract, calls for the insurance of Berardino's features against baseball injury. Berardino signed to play with the Indians last week. This is from the Oshkosh Northwestern, July 3rd, 1973. Daytime television star once was in Major Leagues by Milton Richmond, New York, UPI. John Berardino is walking down the street minding his own business the other day when this guy suddenly pops up from nowhere, catches him from behind, and never gives any hint what's on his mind. A mugging or a meeting? Hey, I recognize you, the guy finally says, positioning himself in such fashion that Berdino has no other course open but to listen. You cost me five bucks one day. You let a ball go right through you in a game against the Yankees. Berardino, a star now of ABC TV's regular daytime network show, General Hospital, had heard the same story dozens of times before, but this time he reacted a bit differently. He hot-dogged it a little. He pulled a fiver out of his pocket and gave it to this guy. Are you positive it was me? Berardino tested his confronter, making him work for his money. No question, the guy said. You were playing second base that day for the St. Louis Browns. Berardino nodded. Do you watch daytime television? He asked. Why, yeah. Do you watch General Hospital? Once in a while, and I know you play the lead. Do you like the show? Sure. Okay, then. Would you mind writing a letter to the Academy of Arts and Sciences telling them? We should be included in the Emmy Award categories. The guy did some quick thinking. It'll cost you another five, he said. John Berardino's noble Neapolitan heritage surfaced instantly. He uttered an Italian word, a slang word recognized universally by Italians and non-Italians alike. He said it softly, not as in a morning sunrise, but suggestively as in a late afternoon departure and the guy immediately took off. Now that's more like the Johnny Berardino I knew with the old Browns from 1939 through 1947. Only then he spelled his name Berardino, throwing in the extra R, and he didn't always speak so softly. The Cleveland Indians bought Berardino for $80,000, big money then in 1948, and that was the year they won the pennant and beat the Boston Braves in the World Series. Bill Veck was running the Indians at the time. He was aware Berardino had attended the famed Pasadena Playhouse and acted in Our Gang movies. He likewise was aware of Berardino's near-classic features, which might be only described as part Barrymore and part Richard Conti. 
never one to let such things go unnoticed Beck had shared Berardino's face for one million dollars with the browns not too many ever saw Berardino. he remembers one game where only three hundred and forty eight showed up not counting the vendors but millions already have seen Berardino on tv in his eleven years at general hospital dr steve hardy is proving more durable than even dr kildare women viewers are so upset about the watergate hearings preempting the show lately they've called in to complain to the network john Berardino is fifty six and everybody should look so good at thirty six he has that same square set to the shoulders the dark probing eyes still have the old laughter in the, and the skin invariably sun tanned stays remarkably free of wrinkles given his choice berardino probably would rather still be playing baseball you can see that when he reminisces about his days with the woe-begone browns that's the closest i've ever come to shell shock he says what i remember best about being with the browns is that we'd make ten runs and the yanks would make fifteen we'd make twelve runs and the red sox would come back with eighteen you never saw so many baseballs flying around in your life it got so bad that after every season i'd have to go back to the beach in santa monica or malibu lie there on the sand and try to recover high point of berardino's total baseball experience though occurred only a few years ago when the yankees invited him to one of their old timers day affairs being a two forty nine lifetime hitter he wondered how come he rated the invite maybe you don't remember mike burke told them but one year you hit a grand slam home run in the ninth inning and that knocked the yanks out of a pennant i don't remember laughs johnny berardino making a question out of it johnny murphy curbs me on a three and two pitch wham goodbye best guess i ever made in my life johnny berardino is not the only baseball player to become an actor in fact uh, turkey mike donlin and rube marquard stand out to me uh, mike donlin had a very decent career in hollywood um i think uh, from vaudeville they're both vaudeville actors and uh mike donlin actually transitioned from uh vaudeville uh to uh, hollywood uh to the silver screen so uh, he may actually be the first one and then um babe ruth has a uh a kind of a, a a history with hollywood as well and lou gehrig does but um they weren't full-time actors uh johnny berardino I, I think is maybe the first uh player who was uh a actor before he started in uh major league baseball and then after his career so he really does kind of stand out to me um as a, a full-fledged actor here who just happened to play baseball and i, I think his uh, his story is really fascinating if you wanted to pick up uh, his cards he has a few uh, only two mainstream and uh, this is one of them uh, which is really kind of my favorites uh, out of the entire 51 uh, set and then he's got the 1952 tops and he's got a couple of others too and, and another one that i really kind of enjoy is this right here and this is a 1941 w753 or 54 i always kind of get that confused because uh, this is the st louis browns team set that you could pick up at the uh, sportsman park and uh, it came in like a box set and then uh, the cardinals also had one as well and I, what i think is really kind of interesting about about these particular cards they're about the same size as a 48 Bowman or 50 Bowman in fact um, they're usually found in high grade um, just kind of the photography is great quality so they did spend quite a bit of money I'm sure uh, putting this set together um, there's some really interesting players found only in this set and I'll be talking more about those players uh, in another video or in another article. But um, Johnny Berardino is, is 
kind of a highly prized uh, player for uh, collectors who uh, kind of specialize in uh, regional sets, which this is. But I'll show you the back of it because you guys might not have uh, seen these cards before. It's kind of a plain, straightforward back. Uh, there's uh, another uh, couple of Hall of Famers, obviously, in the Cardinals set. And I'm trying to think off the top of my head uh, who would be in the Hall of Fame for the Browns at this time. The um, the owner, um, uh, Mr. Barnes, he's also in the set. And you also have, on the Cardinals side, you have Sam Breeden as well. But um, you also have uh, Johnny Mize in that set. And it's, I think, the last uh, time that you see Johnny Mize in a Cardinals uniform. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. I uh, I really enjoy this. This is the uh, the autograph version, <laughs> and he did autograph quite a bit. So you you should be able to find these cards. I think they may still be a little on the more expensive side though, just because of who it is. I do see these come up quite often. In fact, um, I've had this for a long time, and uh, I actually deliberately. Uh, went after a, a Johnny Berardino autographed card, specifically this one, um, right when I kind of started going into vintage hardcore, if you will, uh, as a teenager. So, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it, as always. And if you have any comments on Johnny Berardino here, uh, let me know, because I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And I've never really uh, seen any episodes of General Hospital I am, uh, <laughs> this might shock you guys, I am not a fan of soap operas whatsoever. Um, baseball really is a, a soap opera that's played out on a field. That's my version of watching soap operas. But, oh, and then maybe Star Wars could be considered a soap opera in space, uh, too. So, uh, guys, again, thank you so much for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it, as always. Like and subscribe, if you will. And, um, again, let me know what you think about Johnny Berardino uh, or maybe even the St. Louis Browns, too. It's kind of a fascinating team to me. And I will talk to you later. Okay, bye.